Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we get to take a look at the latest generation for the Chevrolet Colorado. This is the crew cab with the ZR2 Bison package. Huge shout out to Randy, Mary and Chevrolet for providing this midsize truck for me today. Check out their website, that link is down in the description. So the Colorado behind me is finished off in Summit White and we'll go over the MSRP once we go over all the specs and features, especially for this Bison Edition and get this truck out of the road to see if that MSRP is justifiable. So let's start underneath the hood where this has a 3.6 liter V6 paired to the eight speed automatic transmission. It pumps out 308 horsepower, 275 pound feet of torque. That power sent to the rear wheels However, this truck does have the four wheel drive system. It weighs in right around 4,000 pounds. It'll do zero to 60 in six seconds with a top speed of 135 miles an hour. It also has the fuel capacity of 21 gallons. You'll expect to see around 16 miles per gallon in the city, 18 out on the highway. This also has a wheelbase of 128 and a half inches. Its overall length is 212.7. It has a width of 76.7, which is three and a half inches wider with these fender flares. Its height is 72.5. Ground clearance measures in at 10.7 inches. And it also has an approach angle of 32 and a half degrees, a breakover angle of 24.6, and a departure angle of 23.4 degrees. As we move on to the exterior styling now for this Colorado, let's start off with all the ZR2 Bison Edition options. So this has a steel front bumper where the entire bumper, the entire lower section is completely steel. There's a brush trim piece right in the middle just to break it up some. And there's even some tubing and a mini what I'll call bull bar right in the middle with these skid plates that are attached to it up underneath to give you that protection off-road. And as you can tell on both sides, this is where that approach angle comes in, where you can see a lot of that tire, even part of that Multimatic suspension. Now for the rest of this front end, you'll see Chevrolet, which is hollow in the middle section of the grill. Plenty of cutouts provide a lot of cooling to that engine. Now this does not have LED headlights or fog lights, but they have a nice housing to them, turn signals right in the middle, and then the fog lights, of course, are in that lower section. And then this also has some black trim right in the middle of the hood, breaks up that white very nicely and ties in with the black grill there. And as we work our way to the side, a part of this package is also these massive fender flares, which make this vehicle around three and a half inches wider than a traditional Colorado. So it's nice to see those. They cover these 17 inch wheels with the Goodyear all-terrain tires. I like the dark finish and the design for those wheels. I think it works very nicely for this Colorado. Now this does have a set of fixed running boards. Interesting that it doesn't have rock sliders. So these are just traditional running boards. We have these side mirrors, which are body colored on the upper section and then black in the lower section. The rest of the window trim is blacked out too. And it has some nice lines running down the side. There's one at the height of the door handles and then one just underneath the Colorado badge and it goes all the way to the rear fender flare there. So I think it has a good design to it, especially with the crew cab and the shorter bed. And then you can get also get a look at the rear Multimatic suspension, which is definitely very capable for off-road and on-road situations. You'll also notice the ZR2 Bison sticker on the side of the bed. And then for the rear, this gets a complete steel rear bumper with these tubing pieces on each corner. So for your departure angle, if you come down on a rock or anything, it's going to keep the underside of that bed very well protected. That is nice to see. This even has a backup camera. You'll see the taillights on both sides with Chevrolet stamped right in the middle of the tailgate. This can even tow right around 5,000 pounds, which is pretty healthy to see. Underneath is the full size spare as well. So it's nice that they have that accommodation underneath. But now let's go ahead and fire this up. It does have remote start. So if you lock the vehicle and then hold on this button, it will start right up, really cool feature to have. If you hold on that again, you can also shut it off if needed. And then from there, I can unlock the vehicle. We can move on to the bed. So this does have the easy open tailgate. So it will automatically lower down along with having the spray and bed liner to give this truck that added protection when you're using this bed for whatever purposes. There's even tie down hooks so you can safely secure any items. And it's a very lightweight tailgate, so it is easy to close. Now, as we work our way to the back seats, you'll notice that the door panel has a really nice design to it. It's all black there. You have a little bit of storage in the middle as well as the lower section. There's a brush trim piece around that window control and then the release handle is just above that. And you'll notice too, the black leather works its way to the interior. 
where we have a pretty cool design within these seats, all the gray stitching. And then with that running board, it makes it a little bit easier to jump up into this truck. Where again, at five foot 10, I have a good amount of space for my feet and my knees. Right in the middle, there are some auxiliaries. So you can charge any electronics you may have, a little bit of storage just underneath that. And at five foot 10, I have around an inch or so above my head. It feels like you're sitting pretty upright, but I don't really have any complaints with it. I could easily fit back here, maybe go on a small road trip. You're not buying this to go on long road trips with full size adults in the back, but I can fit back here if I needed an extra seat and I needed to ride somewhere. But right in the middle, you'll notice two cup holders along with the armrest if you need to use that. And this even has the manual sliding rear glass so you can open and close that as needed. Pretty good amount of visibility. Even with the headrest folded down there, you get a little bit more if you don't have any backseat passengers. And I also like the fact that you can actually flip up the bottoms of both seats to give you a lot more interior storage, which is nice to have, especially for this size. And as we work our way to the front seats now, the door panels finished off just like the rear, a little bit more storage along with a spot for a drink. We have all the window controls and side mirror adjustments too. Now ZR2 is also down on the door sill and for the company that provides this with the Bison package, you'll see that logo up in the headrest for the front two seats. Now we do not have a grab handle for your uh, front seat passengers either. There is one over on the passenger side, but none for the driver, which is interesting to see. But for the steering wheel, you'll see it's covered in leather. We have a lot of controls on this left side. These are all the cruise control settings. There's the heated steering wheel and then Bluetooth and voice commands are on that right side, along with all these controls for the gauge cluster. This even has volume and tuning adjustments on each side behind the steering wheel, which is nice to have. But with the turnkey, let's fire this up. So with my foot on the brake, we can bring this to life. And on this gauge cluster, on the left side is the tack, on the right side is the miles per hour. There's fuel gauge and some temperatures on the upper section. And in that lower LCD screen, currently you can see miles per hour. You can also view your trip distances, look at your fuel range. There's a few vitals that you can monitor as well, just depending on what you'd like to see. Even the pitch and roll and the degrees for the steering wheel. So when you're going off road, you can monitor all of that. There's a blank page too, if you don't wanna see any of that information. And then back on the home screen, you can go to your home here where you have miles per hour and the range. You can also pull up music. There's the compass, so you can pull up the navigation, even Bluetooth when you have your phone paired and then multiple different settings that you can go through just depending on how you'd like to have this set up. So it's nice that you have that amount of information in that digital gauge cluster. And then over on the left side, you'll see a dimmer switch for the gauges, all the headlight and fog light adjustments, and then the four wheel drive selector. So you have two high, four high, four low. You even have some locking diffs that you can operate. Just above that, there's also the trailer braking system. So when you're towing, you can have that adjusted as needed. There's also one air vent. You can get another look at the hood bulge from the driver's seat here. And then right in the middle, we have the touchscreen system where you have a lot more icons to go through like Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You can go to the navigation, go into audio. We have the split screen on the home setting here where you have music, phone, along with the navigation. And then we also have shortcuts to the camera along with the climates. So you can quickly adjust all of that information. And then there's also some more shortcuts in the lower section where you can get to all this info, just depending on what you wanna use the most, you can easily do that. Now, right in the middle, there's another button for home. Power and volume for the radio is on this left side. You can also use this adjustment over on the right side to further go through all this information if you don't wanna use it as a touchscreen system. And then there's also tuning adjustments right in the middle. Now underneath that for the climate adjustments, the fan speed and power is on this left side. Temperature is on the right side there. And then you have where you like the air to go easily laid out right in the middle. And then below that, we have a few toggle switches. There's traction control along with the rear and the front locker. There's also a trailering system button that you can use, a downhill assist control, and the bed light for the cargo area. Just underneath that, we have the heated seats. So you have two different adjustments for that for driver and passenger, a little bit of storage with a lot more just in front of the shifter. There's also some auxiliaries so you can charge electronics. There are two cup holders on that right side. And if I put the truck into reverse, you will see the backup camera up here along with these guidelines. There's even a trailer line or a trailering line right in the middle. So if you're backing up, you can quickly line up to it. And then with it in drive, there's also plus and minus on the side. So if you're off-roading or you're towing and you need to hold the gear, you can do that. You can also put the vehicle into a low range as well. 
Now just behind that, there's a wireless charging pad, which is really nice to have. And then a good amount of storage space in the center armrest, along with another auxiliary. The glove box also has a plenty of space for all the information that you need to place there. And we'll take one last look at the interior. Up top, there's also the dome lights, and this even has a sunglass holder on the back section, which is really convenient to have. As we set off now behind the wheel for the ZR2 Bison, this has an MSRP right around $56,000. Six grand of that is for the ZR2 Bison package. So with that, you get a lot of the features that I already showed with the steel bumpers, the wheels, everything like that. The suspension is a part of the ZR2 package in general. So you're getting quite a lot for that $6,000 option and for about $56,000 for a mid-sized truck. A lot of people might say, why don't you just go with a full-size truck at that point? But you're getting a lot of capabilities with the size of this truck as far as taking this off the pavement and doing driving styles like that. I own a Toyota Tacoma, so I have a mid-sized truck and that is what I use it for. I take it off-road where you can't use a full-size truck to do those types of things. So you have different capabilities for different size vehicles and the different lifestyle choices that you make with what you're going to do with your vehicle. 56 grand is a lot of money for a mid-sized truck, but when you factor in what you're getting, the only negative that I can see with this truck is turnkey. For 56 grand, this should have push button start. It should have the easy entry and exit and uh, not have a turnkey. So that is the only downfall that I do see right off the bat. And I have been in the Colorado before. I do think it's nice. I did buy the Toyota Tacoma over it, so that's a whole separate topic. But for what you're getting, I think this is a nice interior. We have a lot of the off-roading goodies that you want, especially in a truck of this size. We have the lockers, the pitch and roll, four-wheel drive. It's very, very capable for that style of driving and what you're going to be doing with it. We even have the spray and bed liner, so you can use this to haul whatever items you have and keep that bed well protected. So it's a lot of money, but you're getting a lot for that money too. We even have a very nice interior with the leather seats. Let's give it a mild acceleration here. And we're up to the speed limit there. It's got some get up and go. That wasn't full throttle, of course. It has more power than my Tacoma, so I know it, it definitely has an adequate amount of power. It can't tow as much though, surprisingly. And I think that's because it has this Multimatic suspension, which has been very comfortable on the road but this suspension is going to be geared more towards off-roading. So it's going to give you that extra travel that you're looking for, but it does hinder some towing capabilities. Mid-sized trucks don't tow a lot in general. So if you're not looking to tow a lot and you want that suspension for on-road and off-road, it'll definitely give you a good setup. So I don't have any complaints with the suspension. It, it rides very, very smooth. And then with another minor acceleration, Definitely has plenty of power for this truck and what you're going to be doing with it. It's not a zero to 60 vehicle, but it's got a good amount of power to get up and move. And from this angle, it's very open feeling. It's also very quiet too. It's a pretty solid truck. There's no wind noise, road noise for the roads that I'm doing today with these speeds, but it feels like a very composed truck. You sit pretty high up for a mid-sized truck too. And I love the bulge in that hood there. It's pretty cool to see that from the driver's seat. Just makes it a little bit more aggressive feeling from the driver's seat. So again, around $56,000 for this model. I would say this is pretty much fully loaded for the Colorado. You can get the ZR2 and then you can get the ZR2 with the Bison package. So it gives it a little bit more goodies like those bumpers that you wouldn't see on a regular ZR2 model. So for the top of the line version, you know, we're not pushing $60,000, which I would say would be way overpriced. 50 sticks is still a good amount of money. Uh, but if you want a brand new truck and you want a Colorado, something that is pretty capable for off-road situations with the ground clearance and uh, everything, you really don't have to do anything to this truck to take it off the pavement. It looks like it's very capable in the off-road for, it looks like it's very capable in this stock configuration to take it off the pavement. 
So if you're not looking to do a lot of modifications to your truck, you wanna buy something brand new as is, I'm sure this has a warranty with all the parts and everything since it's built and uh, you can drive it right off the lot. So if, if that's what you're into, this is a pretty good option for being able to do that. But I think that's going to wrap it up for the all new or latest generation for the Chevrolet Colorado ZR2 Bison Edition. Once again, a huge shout out to Randy Marin Chevrolet for providing this midsize truck for me today. Check out their website. Also give this video a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed it and smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.